This is an Earth test to see how good the radio station Earth is. Now I'll just show you across the garden and the radio station Earth is over there. There's the connection there. So just coming back, I've pushed this aluminium rod in just by hand fairly deeply. I've connected it to the earth of this three pin plug which is on a large extension lead which runs back into the shack and so now I'll go into the shack and we'll look at the impedance between the two earths which should be quite low with any luck. Right, here we are back in the radio shack now I have the other end of the extension lead connected here to the earth pin and I measured the impedance of the run of the wire as two ohms. Um, this crocodile clip is connected to the other terminal of my impedance meter and now if I clip it onto this this is the station earth. Oh well that's good. Uh, yeah now just using this 12 volt battery connected I'm just going to see what sort of current I can pass between the two earths. There we go. It's uh, 60 milliamps going between it. Bearing in mind, this is just through the soil, and I haven't pushed that aluminium rod you saw uh, outside in very deeply at all. So I kind of think the station earth is fairly viable. I don't know what you think. You let me know in the comments below. Okay, we're currently tuned to Shannon Volmet. Now, if you have a look, there is a massive amount of noise about this morning. This is a Sunday morning after part three was shot. Now, you can hear the lady, but she's not particularly clear, I must admit. However, take a note of the S reading. So we're looking at about S6. And just intelligible. This is with the new power feed unit and this introduces the power feed unit comparisons. If you recall from part two we were looking at the difference between the two. The new power feed unit is isolated from the receiver's earth. So the earth is from outside in the garden and uh, then the receiver provides its own earth to give you the 50 ohm impedance. However the old power feed unit is connected to the earth. So we'll just swap between the two now and see if there's any noticeable difference. So we're now on the old power feed unit. Well, I think that's significantly better. Which is more intelligible. Similar signal levels. So what we'll do is we'll find a daytime NDB next and test the two power feed units on that. Now what we have is TUR in France. This is 223 miles from me and it's quite good for daytime reception. And this is on the old original power feed unit. So we'll now swap over to the new one. Now on the new one. Well, not only is TUR coming in better, but I can also hear GST in the background, which is Gloucester. That's 100 miles away exactly from my current QTH. So as suspected from uh, program number two in this series, the new power feed unit is much better on the NDB band 
whereas the original old power feed unit seems to have the edge on the HF bands, but only quite slightly. I think you're probably hearing uh, GST there quite well in Gloucester. Both of them transmit on 331. I'm listening on the upper offset. This was the session scan between 400 and 410 for the ALA 1530. This is COD from Italy, 607 miles from me. It's uh, 21.12 at the moment. It's not moving the needle, but uh, look how little noise there is. We're getting a really good punchy signal from that NDB at some distance. And I've just picked up LPS and VZ in France, mixing together on 403. And uh, at the moment France is uh, coming out very prominently, but a moment ago LPS in Switzerland was. So one of the things I find very fascinating about the NDB hobby, you can sit on a frequency and uh, NDBs will come in and out with, within minutes of each other really. Nice little French pile up there, MRV and AGO, both in France. One's around 120 miles, whereas the other's 340 odd miles from my QTH. It'll probably be very hard for you to hear on camera. But in amongst the two French stations, there is VNG in Norway. That is 766 miles from here. This is BOT, Bottrop in Germany. That's 334 miles from me. Currently coming through like a local. On 406 is one of those occasions where the NDBs are going in and out like nobody's business. We have BHX, which is in Birmingham, MJ and TR, which I have yet to identify, and possibly one other. A slight mistake, I misread there due to the clashing. The other station is TW. And there we are on 
406, well, not too surprising, it's France, but 510 miles away. Uh, we can log that, and MJ is the next one to do. Okay, it's another French one, 579 miles away. Marseille? Anyway, terrible on pronunciations. This is BRK from Austria. And there's another NDB underneath. Here we have SG from Sweden. 744 miles from our QTH time now is 2155 UTC this is a BL on 510 currently being received on the lower offset this is an unidentified beacon This is LA from the Czech Republic, 744 miles from my QTH. And look how low the noise is. This is ARD in Romania, 1047 miles from my QTH. An OBR has just appeared underneath. And I don't know where OBR is. This is BSW Romania, 1304 miles away. Russian cluster beacon sending P Kaliningrad and if we tune up you should just about have to hear S and I'm not even going to try and say that but it's also in Russia and it's one of their cluster beacons Okay, so as 
fly, Oscar Victor, kill myself. Good luck, Andre. Your comments and suggestions are always welcome. You can drop us an email at horizons at cri.com.au. On your way, thank you for being with us. We'll see you at the same time next week.